Well, good day, everybody. Welcome to episode three about your bearings in your bicycle. In episode one and two, if you haven't already saw, we were listening to the bearings in some bicycle wheels in our hubs, and then we used a high quality microphone, attached it to some software on a computer, and then we could actually see with spectrum analyzer as well, there's a direct correlation between the sound and the health of the bearing. Now, if you're still not sure about that, Google ultrasound testing of bearings and you'll see it's an industrial common practice and a standard now. In this episode three, we're gonna take a close look at the bearing itself. Can we make them last longer? Can we make them run faster? And then the principles in this video will help us understand much more in depth episode four, the final one, about the controversial ceramic bearings. So let's get on with this one. So bearings, here's one here. It's not from a bicycle, but it's big enough that we can look at and use for illustration purposes. It's called a deep groove bearing. And that's the sort we use in a bicycle. Now there are other sorts of bearings as well, but we're mostly looking at the deep groove bearing. Now the three purposes of the bearing in our bicycle, first one is to locate the shaft. For instance, in our hub on our bicycle wheel, the outside is attached to the shell of the hub, while the inside has an axle going through, and the wheel rotates around the axle, which is stable. Okay. Now the other thing about bearings in the bicycle, or in any situation, is they're in pairs. So you have a pair of bearings in your hub, in your front, you have at least two in your rear, you have two in your pedals, you have two in your bottom bracket, and lo and behold, even though they don't rotate all the way around many times, we have two in our headset. So bearings are usually in pairs. The second reason we use our bearings is to support a load. So whether the load is this way or whether it's this way. So the bearing supports a load. And the third reason we have bearings is to minimize friction. And that's the one we're most interested in. So here's a typical bearing from our bottom bracket area on our bicycle. And you may either buy them separately or they come with the bottom bracket. Either way, they are put together in the factory, lubricated, and the seals put on both sides, and they're considered sealed for life. Of course, we know that's not always the case. So let's go back to our whole bearing here. And we can see that it's made of six different parts. Firstly, the outer race, then the inner race, then the ball bearings themselves, and then a retainer to keep the bearings individually separate so they're not knocking into each other and grabbing each other. And then there's the seal, one on each side, two seals, and of course, last but not least, the lubricant inside. Now have a look at the ball bearings just by themselves. If you take off the seals on both sides of your bearing and then push out the retainer, just use a screwdriver, push out the retainer here, You've got to be careful because all the bearings fall down, as you can see. So that's what the retainer's for, for a start. Now, just in case, you can actually take it apart. It all comes apart. There's your races and your bearings. One just fell on the ground. Right. Ball bearings, just ordinary ball bearings. Now, your ball bearings can be made of ordinary steel, like these ones are. They can be made from stainless steel, chrome moly, titanium, polymer, and of course, ceramic. With our deep groove bearing, we have round or spherical ball bearings inside, and they come in contact on the outside race and on the inside race. And these contact areas bear the load or the force put on the bearing. They also cause friction as the bearing goes round. Now, if we have more ball bearings, then we'll have more contact area and we'll be able to put more force on the bearing. You'll have more load capacity, but there'll be a little bit more friction. If you start taking bearings in out and have the minimum number of bearings, you'll have a more free spinning bearing, but less load bearing capacity. Well, you might say, so what about load bearing capacity of bearings? Well, consider the bearings requirements on your bicycle. In your bottom bracket, even when you're pedaling fast, the RPM, isn't really that high, and it's the same in your pedals, going the same rate. Well, what about your wheels? They might be going fast, going around, but at the hub, they're not actually going that fast. The fastest turning wheel is in your jockey wheel here, if you've got bearings in them at all. 
what you do need to consider is the force that's being put on your crank here in your bottom bracket from your pedaling and the impact from the road, the shock coming up from your wheels on your frame and in here and in particular on your mountain bike. So good quality load bearing capacity on the bearing is important particularly on your mountain bike. Now the last thing to mention about the bearing separately is the ABEC. We really don't need to talk about this but I'll cover it because there's always going to be some who are going to ask about it. Now ABEC stands for the Annual Bearing Engineering Committee and the ABEC of a bearing goes from one which is considered a precision bearing anything less than that is just an ordinary bearing so the ABEC goes from one, three, five, seven and nine, nine being the top. Now the ABEC bearings are usually used in aircraft and medical equipment because of their high RPM. Now we are not talking about high RPM in our bearings so ABEC really doesn't qualify there. The other thing about ABEC is it doesn't specify the load capacity of the bearing, the precision of the bearings themselves, the materials that it's made from, any polishing done to the races and the balls themselves and any no noise or vibration coming from the bearing and the lubricant itself. It's got nothing to do with any of that. So ABEC doesn't really apply to the bicycle bearings. Now let's move on to what everybody's talking about in the industry at the moment for some reason is friction, the friction of a bearing. Can you make it go faster? Well, the first and biggest cause of friction is, wait for it, the lubricant. <laughs> now let's go to the workshop, let's get out of here and we'll show you a demonstration why lubricant is the number one cause of friction. Here's two sealed bearings and they're from a reputable company in Australia and they're steel outer and inner races and steel bearings. There's typical quality of what you'll see in most good quality bikes without going to ceramic. So let's have a look how they spin. Remember these are brand new. And there we go. Now you probably can't see them spinning so I'm going to mark with a texture just a few lines. Right, can you see those lines? <laughs> so that's not spinning at all. So let's take off the seals firstly. Remove the seal. That's one. Right, now taking a closer look. See if we zoom in. As you can see, there's a fair amount of grease in there. So, put on our screwdriver. Now, let's see if it spins any better without the seals. Nope. <laughs> Not really. See those marks still on there. So, that grease, we'll take that out and we'll see what happens. Right, into our jar of petrol. And we'll leave that for about 20 minutes and we'll come back and we'll give it a few shakes. Right, the petrol's gone a different colour so it's definitely cleaned out all the grease. So we'll take it out and degrease the bearing. Right, let's see how it spins. Remember, this has got a little bit of water in it, that's all. Pretty good. So there you go. It's mostly the lubricant inside which stops your bearing from spinning. Let's put the seals back on. We've cleaned them, so we'll put them back on. There you go, a lot better than without lubricant. So it's basically the lubricant that causes most of your friction and the seals is a little bit slower than without the seals. So the seals don't really slow you down much. It's mostly the lubricant. Now the bearing is completely dry. We're going to put on some silicon spray, which is a very, very fine lubricant. Just a little bit. Let's see how that spins. And as you can see, it doesn't spin as well. So as soon as you add a lubricant, it starts adding friction. So, 
It's the lesser of the two evils, really, isn't it? <laughs> you want your bearings to spin really fast. Don't use any lubricant or use as fine a lubricant as you can. So here's some lubricants we can use in our bearings. Why do we use lubricants? First and foremost, to reduce the friction. Secondly, to prevent adhesion at the contact points and also to prevent corrosion. Another point is it helps dissipate heat, which we're not going to worry too much about on a bicycle. Lubricants also remove debris and keep debris out from the bearing area at the seals. So we have grease in one hand and we have mineral oil in the other. We could use either in our bearing. In fact, grease is basically mineral oil, 85% mineral oil, with 15% thickener, anyhow. So let's consider the bearings requirement again. If we're going to talk about our bottom bracket, which has a lot of force or a lot of load, then it's advisable to increase the viscosity of your lubricant, which means grease, and to use more of it. The only problem is with that, when you use a heavier lubricant and more of it, it's going to slow your bearing down, so it won't be as fast. So what if we decide to use a really light lubricant in our bottom bracket bearing? So here's our bottom bracket bearing, and it might be spinning nice and fast, but unfortunately, the lubricant can be so thin, it can be squeezed out at the contact points where the bearing touches your races. So much so that you can effectively be running your bearings dry. The other thing is, with a very light lubricant, it in effect will be pulled down by gravity, and as you spin the bearing, down the bottom the bearings will be fairly well lubricated, but up the top will be a lot less lubricated, and in effect, sometimes unlubricated. It's called high spot exposure. Very unlikely, but it brings out how important it is to have the right viscosity of lubricant. Using a light lubricant also requires very clean conditions. What do we know about the bottom bracket area? Well, all the muck runs down your frame, doesn't it, and into your bottom bracket area. And your hubs are no better off because they're open to exposure from road spray and all that muck. So less than ideal conditions for ultralight lubrication. And Using a light lubrication also requires more frequent cleaning and relubing. So, unless you're prepared to take apart your bottom bracket and your hubs every 10 or 15,000 kilometres, don't go there. So, not saying there's no place for light lubrication on your bike, you've just got to consider the bearings requirements and the conditions that they operate in. Now, where light lubricants do excel is with speed. So, the faster spinning bearing on our bike, is our rear jockey wheels and they're spinning at around seven and a half revs per second that's 450 revs per minute so here's our bearing and it's spinning nice and fast and it's setting up a hydrodynamic effect and what is that consider your hand in a trough of water as you push forward it forms a wave in front of your hand and a trough behind and it requires effort to push forward through that liquid doesn't it and it's the same with your bearings as they go around. Each ball bearing is pushing on the lubrication. Now, if your lubrication is nice and thin, it will get out the way and it will slip through nicely. But if your lubrication is quite thick, it will push, the bearing will push, and there'll be a wave in front of it and a trough behind and require effort, and that will slow your bearing down. So, lighter the lubrication for the higher speed bearing. So you could use lighter lubrication in your rear jockey wheels. Well, as the last word on lubricants, it seems in the bike industry at the moment, it's all about how friction-free, how long your bearings spin for. Well, now we've got nano lubricants that can help you on your way. Yep, super lubricants that are not just an additive for the lubricant you're already using, they're actually a metal treatment, a surface treatment. If you look at your bearing or your races under a microscope, you see there's irregularities. These nano lubes fill in those irregularities and make a super smooth surface to roll on. So your bearings spin almost friction free. Some of these nano lubes also act as like teeny microscopic ball bearings. So as well as the bearings you've got in there, you've got bearings rolling on bearings basically. So that becomes very, very smooth and friction free as well. But in order to do, to add these nano lubricants, you'll need to of course, strip out the factory lubricant you have in there and then treat your bearing as per instructions on the nano lubricant itself. So I'll let you do your homework there. 
the retainer, that's this thing here, usually made from plastic, polymer or metal, and it's designed to keep your bearings nice and evenly spaced and apart from each other so they don't bang into each other and cause each other damage. Now I pulled this one out of this race and see the bearings have gone, boom, just sunk down the bottom. <laughs> so now the other thing a retainer does is it keeps a little bit of lube around each ball as well. So that's a good thing for a retainer. Now the problem is, of course, it's going to cause a bit of friction, keeping a bit of lube around the bearing and just being there in place as well. Now you can get retainerless races. One of them is called a full complement, whereby any gaps they put in more bearings rather than have a retainer. Now this will give the bearing as a whole more load capacity, um, which is good, but these days the full complement bearing is becoming more rare because metals are getting harder and better quality machining, and so you can use a retainer and have less bearings. The other retainerless race available now, which is good to keep an eye on, is a Japanese invention. It's fairly new, and instead of using a retainer, they machine grooves for each ball in the outer race and on the inner race and so those grooves will keep the balls in place as they go around so no need for a retainer and that will be less friction as well so keep an eye on that one the races that see things here one on the outside and one on the inside and the ball bearings run in between contacting both the outside and the inside race for each bearing now these can be made from various substances, these are metal, this one, so steel, you can get chromoly, titanium and now of course ceramic. Now the quality increases when they do better machining on the inside and polishing and that requires a harder metal of course, so then you get less friction. Now even better quality is when they do what's called multi-metal layering. So instead of being made from one metal, it's made from multi-layers and the inside where the bearings run is made from a very hard substance and is extremely slippery, polished and machined really well. The other thing about the races is when you either extract or press them in is you're usually putting the force on the either the outside or the inside race. And you've got to be careful, use the right tools, otherwise you can cause damage. Even a small bit of damage will start to cause deterioration and of course friction. So you don't want that, so use the right tools and use the right amount of force. Don't use too much force, um, otherwise you will start causing damage. Right, over to seals now on your bearings. There's one each side usually, and they press in quite easily just by your fingers. Now the whole purpose of a seal is to keep debris out and keep your grease in. And the important part is not to damage your seal if you're taking it out or putting it back in. As soon as you put a little nick in it, or you slightly bend it, then it's going to allow debris in and it can also slow your bearing down. Now the seals can be made out of a lot of different materials. It's not really that important, but silicon, metal, graphite, rubber, polymer, and for your lightweight freaks, carbon fiber. <laughs> now standard bearing usually has a standard seal, but you can get better seals. They're called labyrinth seals. And a labyrinth just means it's like a hook there and a hook here and it joins together and it makes it difficult for debris to come from the outside to go through an S-bend to get into your bearings. So a labyrinth seal. And even better, you can get a non-contacting labyrinth seal. Now the thing is to remember, as soon as you put lubricant in your sealed bearing, it's also going to come in contact with the inside part of your seal. And that's going to touch the bearing and slow the whole race down anyhow. So lubricant is going to come in contact with the inside part of your seal and slow your bearing down times that by two seals. So you can run your bearing without seals if you want, but we're talking about bicycles here, so not a good idea. Leave the seals on. Just a quick word on the maintenance of your bearings. If your bearing doesn't spin as well as it used to, or it's making funny noises, maybe your hub's feeling a bit rough, sounding a bit rough, and you know it's been a long wet winter, and you might say to yourself, oh, it'll wait till the end of the year, or wait for another three months when I normally pull things apart. It may be too late. Don't leave it too long. Do your servicing of your bearings on a conditional basis. If you know it's been a long wet winter and you suspect something, do it right away. It may save your bearing, otherwise you'll need to replace them. You could be in all sorts of strife as well. So a final word on the bearings is if you're going to install them yourself, make sure you use the right tools and more importantly, make sure that the alignment is right, that they're pressed in all the way. 
There's no looseness, no loose cups in here or here or even in your hubs. Make sure that they're pressed in nice and evenly and there has got to be square and true. A slight malalignment is going to cause more friction and not only that, it's going to cause premature wear. You just won't be getting the efficiency out of your bearings that you can get. So that's important. Installation correctly. Episode 4 will be all about ceramic bearings. Good quality steel bearings. Are they as good as ceramic bearings or better? Whereabouts on your bike should you use ceramic bearings? Replace all your bearings or just in specific areas? Hybrid ceramic, full ceramic, which one? <laughs> what about cheap Chinese ceramic bearings? Certainly save money. These questions and more we're going to answer in the next episode. See you there.